Sendai, ruled by the Date clan, once fielding the most terrifying charging infantry, now of a more peaceful and diplomatic mind. Hi, my name is Mr. Smartonkey and today we're going to be taking a look at the ins and outs of the Sendai. As always we will start with the Sendai's clan traits. The Sendai are named the Negotiators after their skill in diplomatics. This is reinforced by their trait tact, which gives them plus 10 to their diplomatic relations. Both tolerance and respect are traits in a similar vein too, with tolerance reducing unhappiness from differences in allegiance by 3, and respect reducing the resistance to occupation across all provinces by 1. Both of these are incredibly useful for rapid expansion, it will make you able to move out of a recently acquired province much faster than other clans, while keeping the province happy. As if all that was enough, their final trait also supports the rapid acquisition of towns. Siegecraft reduces the surrender time by 2 turns when besieging castles, so with that you are able to siege out the enemy quickly, and once you've acquired their town your other traits will allow you to move out quickly. Siegecraft also helps when you besiege towns in winter, as it means you will take far less attrition before the enemy sallies out. Arrival on the campaign map shows us the Sendai start in Miyagi. Miyagi is a reasonably wealthy province with a port and a telegraph office as its specialty building. The telegraph office of course being able to be upgraded to gain the ability to use railways. It also starts with an inn already built, providing you with even more wealth right off the bat. As with most other clans, you start with two ships out in the water, and I'll once again advise scuppering either both or the more expensive of the two ships, especially on harder difficulties where you pay a higher upkeep. Even more so than with other clans, these ships really won't do much for you in the early game as none of the important towns around you are in range for naval bombardments anyway. You also start with a geisha already recruited, which is moderately useful. Finally, I find it worth mentioning you start with a shogi tai unit in your army as well. Kind of like a throwback to the Date's focus on charging infantry and yelling at everyone. Let's move on to your neighbours, of which you have a few, starting with the Morioka and Iwate to your north, who start the campaign allied to you. Don't let this fool you though, they will, just like any other clan in Fall of the Samurai, likely betray you soon enough. I'm going to make it a general point in this video is to mention that you cannot trust anyone before they're on the divide. As likely as clans are to accept an offer of allegiance, they will just as soon break it and betray you, so keep that in mind. The town of Iwate has a telegraph office as its specialty building. To their west in Ugar the Kabota, your only enemy at the start of the campaign. Interesting to note is that there's no path to take to their province from yours that doesn't lead through either your northern or western neighbour. Ugo has a blacksmith as well as a port as its notable buildings. To their south and your west are the Yonezawa and Uzen, who you're not currently at war with but who might be a more logical first target. Uzen has a Buddhist shrine and a port as well as a traditional dojo already built, which means you'll be able to recruit traditional units with an increased charge bonus the moment you take it. Finally to your south are the Aizu in Fukushima which also has a telegraph office and a port, similar to your own province. Let's talk expansion paths. The Sendai start in a fairly strong location, and they can make it even stronger by taking the entire northern part of Japan before moving south. This will ensure you won't be stabbed in the back. You could try and get alliances with the clans to your south to secure that side while you're busy taking the north, but as I said before, you can't really rely on those allies to hold up their end. So even if you do manage to get some alliances, make sure to keep some forces nearby either way in case things turn south. After taking the northern part of Japan's main island, you could get on some ships and sail to Eizo to take it from the Matsume, which will further secure your position in the north of Japan. Whatever you do, never trust the Matsume with an alliance. As much as other clans will likely betray you, the Matsume are almost guaranteed to do so. Finally, let's have a look at the Sendai family tree. Your 39 year old daimyo, Date Yushikuni, has no traits, but he does have two sons. His 18 year old son and heir, Date Shinsaku, also without traits, and his 12 year old son, Date Nobuhisa. Normally this would be the part where I talk about the Sendai unique units, but unfortunately for the Sendai, there are none, so let's move on. Next up is the army composition recommendation. As mentioned in previous clan overviews, for the army composition recommendation I will not be recommending the most effective army, as that would mean I'd show the same army for every single clan, but instead I will recommend an army that stays in line with the clan traits and theme. The Sendai are called the negotiators, and their traits show they have respect and tolerance for those of a different allegiance. So with that in mind, it wouldn't be so far-fetched to say some modern units may have made their way into the army. First up however are the Yari Ki. A couple units of these will help keep the enemy cavalry at bay and will protect the next unit on this list. Revolver Cavalry. I've spoken about these quite extensively in previous videos, so I'm sure you understand by now, they're pretty good. As your mainline infantry unit, I think Shin's and Gumi Police Force fit the theme quite well. They're a traditional unit using a modern weapon. They've got a decent ranged attack, but if all else fails you can charge them into melee where they will win most fights. Staying true to their shogunate heritage are the shogi tai, who will add an extra bit of oomph in melee battles your Shinzengumi police force will initiate. Finally, armstrong guns, almost a necessity in any army. 
They're just so incredibly strong and will force the enemy to attack you more often than not, which allows your Shinsengumi police force and Shogitai to hide in forests and surprise the enemy with a powerful charge. That is going to do it for the Sendai Clan overview. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I shall do my best to answer them. If you like these types of videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also make sure to join my Discord channel if you just want to hang out and chat. Thank you very much for watching, hope you've enjoyed, have a good day and goodbye!